If you are new to VBA, then this lesson is for you. In this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Visual Basic Editor, which is the place or the tool where all your macros are stored, whether it's recorded or written macros. And this is very important to know the main feature and how it works before you write any line of code. So first of all, one hygiene factor, if you don't have this developer tab, you can just right click here on any empty space, you do customize the ribbon, and then you have to tick this checkbox. And then you say okay, and you get it. Then if you see here, I can record a macro. Basically, when I record a macro and I do some steps in Excel, Excel will automatically write the code for me. And this is a very important feature if you are a beginner in macros. So I'm just gonna click on it. Here I can choose a name, I can put a shortcut, and I can select where I want this to be recorded. So I'm just gonna say this workbook, and I say okay. And then for example, I can come here and color this cell in orange. Then I go to my developer and I stop recording. Now I have recorded a macro. So to see where the code is, basically you have several options. The first option is a shortcut. So you can do Alt F11, and then you get to this Visual Basic Editor, which is what we're gonna see in details. And you can see that if I go to modules, I double click on module one, I can see where my macro got recorded. If I want to go back to my Excel sheet, I can click here, I'm back. Again, some other options to go to my Visual Basic Editor. The first one is to click under Developer and I can click on Visual Basic, or I can click on Macros, and here I can see all my macros. So if I select Macro 2 and I do Edit, I can automatically go to Macro 2. And then the last option is to go to view and then under view you have macros, view macros, and then you can do the same thing. So this is how it is. Now, if you close this by mistake, don't get worried. Everything you change will get saved automatically. So you don't have to think about it too much. And you can also go back to your Excel sheet by just clicking here and then going to your Excel sheet. So let's go back to our Visual Basic Editor. And if it doesn't look like this one, don't worry too much. I'm gonna explain the components and I'm gonna show you how to add those components. So first we start with some of the windows. So this is a property window. If you don't have it, you can do view and then you have property window. So you click on it and then this will appear. And basically it will show you the properties of what you have. Here it's a module, so there is not much in terms of property. There is the name of the module and I can change it. I can just say P1 underscore module. And then if I click anywhere, you can see that the name changes. But if, for example, I click on a sheet, you see there are much more options that I can change. I'm not gonna go through them, but I just want to show you this window. The other window you need to see is a window that comes at the bottom, I'm just gonna put it, it's called immediate window. This immediate window is important when you are debugging your code and you want to check things. So this is how you can get it by going again to view and having this window. Here is where you have your code. So now I have my code in module one here, P1 module. I can have something called a sub. A sub is a procedure. So basically here I have a procedure. It starts here, it ends here, and here I have some lines of code. If I want to write another procedure, I can just come here. I can write sub, name it, for example, test. If I press enter, you get those parentheses automatically, and then you get your end sub. So this means that this is another procedure. If you want to see one of the two procedure or one of the many procedures that you have, for example, I just want to see this one because I want to focus on it. You can come here and then press here, procedure view, and you see only the procedure that you want. So again, I'm gonna show you with the other one. I click inside it, I click here, and you see that the other one is not viewable. One of the important things that we have is this window, which is the project window. In this window, I have a few things. 
One is this personal workbook. You might not have it. It is not that important. It's okay for now. But basically what it does is that it is visible for all your projects. So assume that you want to write a macro that is available for all your projects. You can write it and put it in the module one or module two here. And then every time you open an Excel sheet, you will have it available and you can use it. The one that is related to this workbook is this part. And you saw already my module. And in my module, I can write my procedures, my functions, etc. I can have as many modules as I want. So if I come here on modules, I do insert, I can add another module. So you have module one now. I can even come here and do insert and add a module. So same, and you get another module here. You can just click on them and then you can change the name. The important thing here is sheet one. So sheet one, it represents the sheet that you have here. If I add another sheet here, you can see that now I get sheet two. So usually when you want to write a code in sheet one or sheet two or sheet X, it is basically a code that you want to execute only for this sheet. Otherwise, it is better to put them in modules. Now, what are those codes that usually are executable for only this sheet? If I double click on sheet one, you can see here I have general, so I can select worksheet. And then here I have some procedures that are only for this worksheet. So for example, here I have calculate. If I click on it, I have one procedure that is called worksheet underscore calculate. Do not change the name here, but whatever you write here will get executed when a new calculation is performed. In this one, for example, something will happen if you change your selection. So for example, if I type here message box and I say hi and I close my parentheses, this will get executed every time I select a cell. So if we go to sheet one, we select a cell, we get hi. If I go to sheet two, I select a cell, nothing happens. Why? Because I wrote a procedure only for sheet one. So let's remove this. Let's keep them blank. You also have this workbook. This workbook basically has procedures that will apply for the whole of the workbook, which means any sheet you are doing something on it, it will apply. And again, you have the same thing. So you have workbook and then you have all the procedures. So for example, the one I have here will apply every time you open your Excel sheet, something will happen based on the code that you write. So if I want to run my macro, there are those three buttons that are very important. Instead of going to my Excel sheet and then running macros, I can just come to any module like this one, click on my procedure anywhere inside. If I click on this, it will run my macro. And then if I want to stop or reset my macro, I can use this button. This is important when you have a bug, for example, you can just stop the macro and then run it again. If I change the name of my sheet, for example, I call it S1 instead of sheet one, and you go back to VBA, you will see that this sheet one name didn't change, but in the parentheses, the new sheet name comes. So when you are writing code, you can either refer to sheet one or there is another type of code that can refer to the exact name of the sheet. The next thing I want to show you is functions. You know, in Excel, you have functions like sum, you have functions like if, etc. You can create your own functions in Excel. So I'm just going to write something very basic. I'm going to call it function square, for example, SQ. And then I'm going to say by val x as integer. And then I'm going to say SQ equal x times x. So what I did now, I just squared x. You see, I have a function now. If I go to my Excel sheet and I write equal SQ, you can see that now I get this function as if it was a normal function in Excel. So if I put five here, I get five times five, which is 25. One important thing that you have in VBA is the color pattern. So if you see here, I have some blue color. The blue color are keywords. So for example, with and with, and sub, etc., are keywords for VBA. VBA recognize them and it will color them in blue. And even if I write them in small letter, 
it will automatically change them to capital. So you don't have to remember those letters, whether it should be capital, not capital, etc. VBA will do it for you. The other thing that you have is this green color. So whenever you put an apostrophe before some text, everything after the apostrophe on the line will become a comment, which means that you can explain what you are doing in your macro. And I advise you to do this. For example, I can say this is a macro to color a cell. And this will not get obviously executed. But it's important that when you come and you want to change your code, you understand what was there. I can even come anywhere like here, for example, and write something after an apostrophe. It will color this in green, but this before the apostrophe stays normal and it will get executed. Another thing that you will see is if, for example, I make a mistake. So assume that I have a dot here, I go to the line, I will get here a pop-up that will tell me what's happening. So, and you can see that the color of the text now is red because there is a problem. When you are a beginner, keep this pop-up on. If you are an advanced user, I advise you to go to your tools, options, and then you have this auto syntax check, remove it, and then you just get the color without the pop-up and obviously you can just fix it yourself because a lot of times you will want to copy paste things and you don't want this annoying pop-up to stop you every time. When you have a long line of code, let's say that this was very long up to here, if you want to improve readability, what you could do is go to the line. To go to the line, you can do space, underscore, enter, and as you can see, I don't get any more an error. And last thing I want to show you is how to search for things. So for example, let's say I forgot how to write message box. I don't know if it's an E or an S. So I can do M for example, I do control space and then I can get everything that starts with M and then I can see, okay, that maybe message box is here. I can write, for example, an S, you can see, I can see a message box. Whereas if I put an E, I don't see the message box. So now I can select it. I can press tab. It will autofill the name. And then I can say here my hi and close the parentheses and add it to the code. Identation is very important in your code because if you don't have identation, it's hard to read. You can see here that my code is identified. So here I have my with statement and within the with, I have all this sub statement and they are all identified. If I want to ident a paragraph or I want to ident a line, I just select what I want to ident and I can click here to make it go to the right and click here to make it go to the left. If you don't see this, you just right click here and you select edit. If you want to stop one part of the code from running, you can just select it and click here it will comment your code so it becomes green. So when you run the macro, it will not execute. And then once you want to put it back, you will just click on the other one, uncomment block, and then you will get everything back. So these are the main features you have in your Visual Basic Editor. In all the lessons that are gonna follow, we're gonna learn how to record macros, how to write macros to make our job easier. So please, if you like the content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and like this video.